Hey, this is Kelly Kim with AHA Collective Agents Helping Agents Collective, a Facebook group where we collaborate and share useful tips, forms, ideas, and collaborate with one another to grow ourselves as real estate agents and market our brand. Today, we're going to talk about how to hack Op City. Those of you who are with eXp, we get Op City uh, for free and love that. Um, I've been able to close six deals in just the last year, um, not including referrals and um, can't beat that. It's a free is free. So let's talk about um, the table of contents that we're going to review. So this is the areas that we're going to cover when it comes to OpCity, all my tips and tricks. For those of you, again, with Op, that are new to OpCity, it's an app that you want to download on your phone. It's for free. It's a platform that Realtor.com uses to generate leads for those of us who are agents. And again, with the XP, it's free uh, for a, a lead generation source. And I believe a lead is a, every lead is a good lead. And even if I have to pay 35% at closing, receiving something for nothing is better than nothing at all. And you don't want to look, uh, look a gift horse in the mouth. So the bottom line is you're going to want to take land, investors, all of them, check all in the beginning in your preferences. So you're going to go to your preferences and you're going to choose um, all of them. In the beginning, you don't have a choice. You can't filter out the things until you have actually close some deals and you can be a little more picky. But um, the first thing you're going to want to do in preferences is set up your auto reply. They say it takes five, four to five touch points with a client, a customer for them to be loyal to you. So um, we're going to walk through this uh, step by step, but setting up your auto um, message reply that's personal from you is going to be the first step that you want to do in your preferences. Um, they do give you a, an Op City phone number. Um, but you're going to want to use the platform to actually um, communicate as well. Um, you can definitely put them in your own CRM, your own marketing campaign program, but you know, you're going to want to use their own platform just because of the um, algorithm um, that it generates that you are um, actually communicating with the, with your the customers that they give you. So be sure to set up your auto preferences. Mine said something like, um, Hey, it was really great talking with you today. Um, I'm great for the in, I'm happy, you know, grateful for the introduction. You're going to be hearing from me really soon. I'm going to start working behind the scenes um, with uh, some of the um, the criteria that was given to me from you and the agent that the representative that connected the two of us. So um, set that up. You cannot put your phone number in there. Unfortunately, like I said, they're going to give you your own phone number um, through Op City, which is fine. But um, we're going to talk about that as well. Also in your preferences, you're going to want to change your zip code on a regular basis again. And I also test my, do a test alert regularly. I don't know if it really means anything, but I, I think for some reason in my back of my mind, the fact that I'm actually testing that the test alert is working is, is sending probably some kind of algorithm also to OpCity that I am actively on the um, app and that I'm making sure that they're, I'm able to get phone calls. So I kind of hit the test button on a regular basis and I'll change my zip code from like, I'm right now I'm in Mesa, Arizona. So I will have 85206, but I might change it up to, you know, North Phoenix area or Scottsdale every once in a while, or even Buckeye, just kind of move it around a little bit. But I primarily stay kind of in my area in the beginning. So let's go to the next um, page here. We're going to talk about when is a good time to set up OpCity. Now, I think this is crucial because you need to determine if you have time to invest with OpCity because the next 30 days, I believe, are crucial. You need to be able to claim every single lead that comes in, even if it looks like it's a dud. OK, so for an example, um, you're going to get um, a message that it is... Um, $150,000, you know, manufactured home or at least for, you know, $1,000. And I know you're thinking like, that's probably unreasonable, especially in this market. You want to hit claim every single one and you want to be quick on the draw. I do believe that the first six leads that come in, they say the, the first leads that come in are kind of testing you. Um, OpCity is testing you to see whether or not you're a responsive and eager agent and if you're going to take care of those leads. So you're going to do want to do everything you can to not only claim it as soon as it comes in, you're going to want to update the client information um, as often as possible. Even like 
daily and or every other day just do it as much as you can at the very minimum you have to do it at least once a week in their platform again i also say put it in your crm but you want to be communicating and set aside time this first 30 days to make sure you're available so if you're going on vacation or you have a bunch of meetings coming up you're going to a conference do not set up your um op city oh just for those of you who are with exp um you need to call the broker and the broker will actually uh, set you up with Op City. Now, I did hear something. I don't know if it's just by state. We had a broker meeting recently, and they communicated that you're on a waiting list now because they are kind of full with Op City generated leads at this point until someone drops off. But I'm going to tell you what people drop off all the time. So um, get um, on the backup list with the brokers. So um, again, it's free. Why not? Um, and as soon as you're available, make sure you once those leads start coming in you never ever ever skip okay so you're going to want to click speed as fast as possible in the first 10 seconds and we're going to talk a little bit more about that um, and about actually how to claim it in just a few minutes but um you want to be just diligent and don't be discouraged by some of the leads that come in in the beginning again you i really believe you have to crawl before you can run so uh, be ready for that. All right. So next we're going to talk about those preferences. So like I said, in the beginning, um, you're, you're going to get what they, you get all of this, you get lease, land, investors, buy, sell, location, budget, property types are going to be most likely manufactured homes. Um, you're going to set up your auto message. I already talked about that, but in the beginning, you don't really get to choose. Um, I think you might be able to choose your budget in the beginning, but in regards to the different types of leads that come in, uh, you're going to get probably some duds or ones that are probably unrealistic in the beginning. But let me just tell you, I took every single lead that was a lease that was $1,000, even though I knew I couldn't get it for them. I still connected with the client. And just because it comes in that it's $1,000, when you start talking to them, sometimes you find out they can uh, qualify for a lot more. They're paying a lot more right now. So sometimes that representative that connects you um with uh you know to the client doesn't really take all the information down correctly i cannot tell you how often that happens that it's not quite accurate so don't be discouraged on the quality of leads that you get in the beginning you cannot change it um you cannot say oh i don't want manufactured homes you get all of it in the beginning but again um in the beginning, even though I had leases and I had manufactured homes and I'm thinking they're in Casa Grande, they're like 40 minutes away, take it, okay? Take it, take it, take it, take it, because you never, never know. Um, and you can, we can talk about releasing them a little bit later, but take advantage of every single lead that comes in. Do not be discouraged. And when you have closed a few, then you can be a little more picky about what you're choosing. If you're saying, I don't want any more manufactured home or my budget is a minimum of you know, $300,000 or something like that. You can be a little more picky down the road, but in the beginning, take every single lead, 100%, all right? So um, next one. Oh, and I do wanna tell you that with that, my first closings were listings, even though I was taking all these um, what I would, we probably would all say were duds. Um, I took every single one of them and the fact that I was so responsive and that I was communicating about these clients on a regular basis in their, in their own app and platform, they end up sending me two listings. And that was one of the first two, um, closings that I did. So don't be discouraged. Um, so what's going to happen is the call is going to come in. Uh, first of all, actually what's going to happen is on your phone, you're going to get, you know, a notification If those of you who have Facebook or you have Instagram, you're going to get like a notification that says, um, you know, it comes up on your phone and it says, um, oh, I have a notification from, you know, either a text message or a Instagram or something like that. It comes up just like that. And it's a little green button that says claim. And you want to hold your finger down. A lot of people don't know that. People will just hit the claim button and it opens up the app. That takes a couple extra seconds. Hold the claim button down. And when you hit the claim button down, it's going to come up with a pop-up where you can hit claim or skip. Okay. So you hit claim right away. So op city comes up, you hit claim, um, right away. One of the things when what's going to happen is then the, uh, representative is going to get on the phone with you and she's going to tell you a little bit about the client, tell you whether or not they've been pre-qualified. If they have an agent that they're committed to and not committed to, you just say, yes, yes, great. would love to talk to them, take them, um, 
a lot of times that representative doesn't have all the accurate information. I cannot tell you how often that happens. And did you know that even though you have someone who's looking for a property, which are probably the majority of the people that are coming through, 40% of them are sellers too, but that representative didn't ask. And you need to make sure you ask that question, okay? So always, always, always claim it. Never, ever skip. And do not be discouraged on the $150,000 property claim that comes in um, because it will come up on the screen that it's $150,000 and it's a manufactured home or it's a lease. Um, let me tell you just a quick little story about how a $150,000 a lead came in where I was not really wanting to take it. So I was in the middle of church. You know, I'm going to tell you, it always comes like in the worst time possible. You're in church or you're driving in the car, which shouldn't be on your phone, but you know, whatever. I'm not saying I am or I'm not, but having said that, like you, that it comes in at the worst time, right? This always does. I hit the claim button. I'm like, okay, now I see the details. And then she puts me through and I'm like, dang it. It's $150,000 manufactured home on a Sunday afternoon. It's beautiful out. Okay. So I'm, of course, you know, put on your happy face and you're like energetic with the client. And I'm like, Hey, it was so nice to meet you. What are you looking for? Okay, great. This property. So I, I right away tell her, um, I'm on it. I'm in a meeting right now, even though I'm at church and I'll, I'll get with you within the hour. I'm going to look up this property, make sure it's still available. Um, and she's like, you know what? My husband also is probably not going to come with me today. I looked at properties yesterday with him and I dragged him around. So probably just you and me today. But, you know, if we see something great, then we'll follow up with him and get him to come take a look at it. So I go back, do the work. Obviously, the house that she wants to look at is no longer available. It's already under contract, but I'm not about to tell her that. I look at see what she's looking for in the area. I find six more properties for her to see. Um... I schedule them, tell her, meet me at this particular property. We're going to start there. I route it all out. We go, we meet her. I meet her. She comes in. The first property says, I want this house a hundred percent. Oh, and by the way, I have a house to sell in Fountain Hills, Arizona. Nice to know. Okay. Um, so that $150,000, oh, it gets better. That $150,000 within 72 hours, I had her house sold. I had a contract on the new property she's purchasing and she bought that house. And during the open house, I had another client walk through the door during the open house. Um, and she was looking at properties like that property, but went around the corner and I had connected with her so well during that open house, that this client went around the corner, looked at another open house, called me and said, would you be my agent? And will you write this offer for me? So, you know what? $150,000 manufactured home, what you probably thought would be a dud can turn into three deals. Okay. So do never, ever, ever skip. Always claim, always take it. Okay. So hundred percent, that's the first thing that you need to do. Um, when I get off the phone, um, uh, so because I've set up my preferences really quick too, since I set up my auto message, as soon as I got off the phone with that representative and that client, it automatically sent them an email, a text message saying it was really nice to meet you, whatever their preference was. Sometimes it's email or text, depending on what they prefer. Um, and, and the representative has already set that up. So that message goes correct directly to them that you've already set up. Again, you can't put your phone number in there. It's going to use their phone number, but it sends that first touch or second touch points because you talked to them on the phone and now your second touch point was a, a text message that or an email that went directly to them saying that you are working behind the scenes and uh, you look forward to working with them. So that's a huge, um, a huge way to disconnect with your client. But the next thing that I just cannot encourage you enough is to stand out. Now, I talk about this on AHA Collective on a regular basis and um, it's a way for us as agents to just stand out with your clients. So one of the first things that I do is I, on my phone ahead of time, in my photo messages, in my, um, in my uh, video messages on my phone, I have one pre-made ready to go. And it says something like this. Hey, this is Kelly Kim. I just got off the phone with you um, with Op City. I look forward to working with you. I'm working behind the scenes to take a look at the property that you're interested in. And, or I also have one, um, I'm pulling CRMs. I'm doing a competitive market analysis, CMA for your property. It, and I'm going to contact you really soon as possible to schedule a time to meet up with you. 
blah, blah, blah. I have those messages already ready to go. So it's just a generic message that it's just a touch point. And hey, this is Kelly Kim um, putting a face to the name. And then I also say, by the way, I am including my contact information because I have a realtor dot com phone number that you have connected with me about but here's my direct number save me in your contacts right now and if you forget my name which might happen you just search realtor in your phone and you're going to find me okay so i do that to stand out so do a video message that's pre-saved if you have time i really encourage you to do a a live video as soon as you get off the phone with them Hey, it was really nice meeting you. This is Kelly Kim. I just talked to you on the phone. I'm working behind the scenes. Um, I, I know that you're interested in this particular property address. I'm gonna do my best to get all the information about it. I'm gonna try to schedule this some time. Um, that's, I send that message as well. So that's, again, another touch point. Can't encourage you enough to do that. So make that connection. I'm a big advocate on sending a video message. In this market, we need to stand out in any way possible that we can by just connecting with our clients on a more personal level, not just somebody behind you know, the computer. So immediately after I get off the phone, I go put them into KB Core. You know, again, again, it's always in most in you know opportune time, like you're in, like I said, church or you're in the grocery store, you're, you're working with another client communicate with them that, hey, I'm with a client, try to give them a timeline of how soon you're going to get with them. If again, if they are a seller, they want to list their property, man, you got to make that hot. You got to tell them that they go to the top of the food chain and you make that appointment with them like ASAP. When is the earliest I can meet with you? I'm working behind the scenes, getting your, I really want to make sure I get the most for your home until I see it in person. I can't really do a complete market analysis, but I'm doing behind the scenes information. So I have that ready to go when I come and see you. So, um, get those, get, get them into KV core immediately set up their search. So they have something that they're working from with you right away as you are preparing to meet with them uh, either for a listing or to show them the property that they're interested in or getting them more information. So for sure, stand out, you gotta stand out. So the next thing um, I you're going to do is I always introduce them to my loan officer. So I would say probably 70% or so of the, of the um, customers or clients that are coming through from uh, Op City are not pre-qualified. And they may have a lender that also was tagged in during the realtor.com. I also just put them on a three-way message immediately with my lender. Now, I, if you haven't set up a good um, relationship with a loan officer, I encourage you to do that. I have one that is absolutely fantastic. And as soon as I have a hot lead, I put them on a three-way message. Hey, this is um, Susie, this is Kari. Kari, this is Susie. And I just wanted to connect the two of you. Um, I'm getting behind the scenes looking at property, your properties that you're interested in looking at. But in, until you're pre-qualified, to be honest with you, we can't even put an offer on a property. So I would, I can't even put an offer. So I encourage you to talk to uh, Kari. She's going to work behind the scenes with you and get you pre, get you a pre-qualification letter. So I do my best to actually do that three-way phone call via text message um, so that you're introducing the client to the lender. Um, just saves you a ton of time. And if you have a good loan officer, they're gonna follow through and they're gonna follow up. And um, if you don't have a good one, uh, let me know. I'm have some great ones, but get a good relationship with a good lender to make sure that that is happening because I don't want you wasting your time and they definitely need to be pre-qualified before you're running around showing it done tons of properties. So um, I just speak very candidly. I tell them, listen, where are you at with your lending? Because this is super important. I, I try to have that conversation. If you've had an extra conversation with them, I try to tell them that in that first meeting, hey, do you have a lender? I'm going to put you in touch with them. So I don't just throw that out on them afterwards. I do that in that first initial uh, conversation if they're not a cash buyer or if they don't have a lender already in place. So, um, so at definitely three is always better than two to make sure that someone is uh, ready to go to purchase a home. So you're not wasting your time. So the next thing is, um, you need to have timely updates. So this is just part of their algorithm that happens with OpCity, And I want to make sure that you're set up for success. So if you do not update your clients in OpCity weekly, they're going to temporarily 
temporarily disable you. Okay. So I always say as much as possible, you, as soon as you've contacted with them and you connected with them, you need to go and update them in the first hour or so after you've connected with the, the client and, uh, the representative that put you on the phone, you're going to get an update that you need to, to put some notes in there that, did you talk to them? Of course, you know, you talked to them because they connected you, but you, you need to say even a little bit more that you connected with them. You spoke with them, you're working with them. You're good. You're pulling up the properties. I encourage you. Um, that first one is like put in one or two sentences as much as possible. Whenever you put notes update that you either spoke with them, you met with them. And if you met with them virtually because you did a video message, I think that counts. So I, I, and when you put that, you met with them, it also bumps you up in the algorithm. So be sure to mark that you met with them. I, I don't care if you didn't see them face to face. Hopefully you do get an opportunity to meet with them face to face, but always, always, always update your clients. Um, you have to at minimum, update it once a week through the app. And if you have not done that, then they're going to disable you. So I will tell you behind the scenes, I have continued to get phone calls, even though I've been disabled, but I never let it go more than a few hours after being disabled. It just happens every once in a while, but do your best to update as much as possible. Again, I always throw all my clients into KV Core, my CRM, so that I'm working in in my platform as well as their platform, but for the algorithm to really catch that you are a really good agent, two sentences is really important as much as possible. I will be honest there. Sometimes I just put in KV core, KV core, and I just do copy paste for every, cause I might, it's all the same day of the week that you have to update your clients. So, um, just do your best to put in something that you've communicated with them. Okay. Otherwise you're going to be disabled. So be sure to do that. So now when is it important to let them go, to release them or to hold a client? So when, why? So if your client just, let's say they ghost you or they, or they're not getting pre-qualified and they're not doing anything. Um, again, I always put them in KV core. So I have them behind the scenes working with them, but if they are ghosting me and they are not responsive and I, I, there's nothing I can get them to do to just communicate with me. Um, then I'm going to, I'm going to release them. Now I typically don't release them for like a week or two after I've gotten them. I try to do as much as I can to try and keep them on. I might keep them even up to 30 days if I've had maybe one touch point with them, or I felt like I had a connection or I just do my best. Um, at, at some point though, you, there's time to let them go. If they're just literally taking up your time of having to, update and they're not looking at anything through your KV core because you can see if they're looking at properties or not. And if they're not doing anything, it may be time to let them go. And I, then I just release them and put down notes why I'm releasing them. And then you have to check whether or not you will let, they will automatically try to reconnect you with them if they start looking again, which is not a bad deal. But if you know that this person hasn't, doesn't, has horrible credit, um, they, they, they're not working on getting their credit repaired. They're not dealing with their, they're just unrealistic. Um, then it's maybe time to just let them go. But sometimes like I have a client right now that unfortunately is going through a divorce and he has some credit repair he has to do because the ex-wife didn't, um, continue making the car payment and he's got to fix some things. So if, and that happens, so you may just want to hold them for 30 days. So you give them some time and you don't have to keep updating them and it's not going against your algorithm. So there's sometimes you just need to hold them. Um, but again, always put them in KV core. Okay. So, cause you never know when you start seeing them being active again. So sometimes you need to hit the snooze button. So that's also going to be in your platform at times. Um, let's say you're going on vacation and, or you have a conference that you're in and, and or you're in church and you don't want to take the phone call or you're in a meeting or you're giving a presentation like I am right now. You don't want to, you want to snooze it. So you're going to, it's at the top right of, um, op city. You snooze it from anywhere from an hour to, I believe 24, 48 hours. You can snooze it so that you're not being, it's not going against you if you did not claim that client. Um, or claim that, yeah, claim that client that comes through from the representative. So sometimes it's time to just uh, to snooze it and give yourself a little bit of a break. All right. But don't snooze it for too long and be sure to update that. All right. So our next one is when you actually have, finally you have, you're on the finish line, you have 
got a contract, you're going to have to update that you have a contract in place. You have an accepted offer and you're going to close the property. Now this, you need to make sure you have your W-9 ready to go. And that's um, available through us. Um, it's going to be in Skyslope um, under forms and you're going to get your W-9 ready to go from the brokers so that you can actually get paid. All right. So you need to have that ready to go. I just keep that in my files folder so I have it ready to go and I can upload it. And it's actually really easy. Once you finally get a contract um, um, in place or you're ready, you're clear for close, you're just going to email all those documents. It's so easy. It tells you right in the they, they literally walk you through it from that client. Once you've entered into a contract, they'll say, upload your forms or email your form, email your contracts and all your documents to this email. And then they update it on their end. And then you get paid still the same way. It's going to be through title. Um, they just, it's when you've gone into, for those of us who are at EXP with, you know, you're going to update that it was a referral from OpCity in um, your closing documents. And then when you set up your, in your dashboard that you are, this was a referral. So be sure it doesn't happen overnight. I will tell you that it takes a little while for them to catch up. So, but it's just going to be something that you update until they're done closing on their end, but you still get paid. All right. So if you have found this to be helpful, be sure to join AHA Collective page on Facebook, Agents Helping Agents Collective, where agents just like you and me, we share encouragement, forms, tips, tricks, and tons of useful information, and we collaborate. I'm also on Instagram, AHA Collective, Agents Helping Agents Collective is actually spelled out on Instagram, but uh, you are welcome to join our free Facebook page for all these tips and tricks. I hope that you found this is helpful um, and good luck with Op City. It has been super successful for me and I know that if you work it, it's worth it and it's free um, for those of us who are with eXp. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Um, I know it takes a little bit of time, but I have closed again six just in the last year and I have four more under contract. So good luck, guys. Thanks.